The life of Chinese police chief uh, Wang Lijun reads like something from crime fiction and is now the subject of a 40-page cover story in Southern Metropolis Weekly magazine. Wang is almost certainly the most famous or infamous police officer in China. Uh, the 53-year-old is a former vice mayor and police chief of Chongqing. That's the city he was brought in to clean up in a notorious Smash the Black anti-mafia campaign, as it was called, uh, which was orchestrated by the then Communist Party secretary uh, of Chongqing, Bo Xilai. And then in March, Wang dramatically fled to the U.S. consulate in nearby Chengdu. Uh, there he spent 30 hours speaking to U.S. diplomats. After leaving, he was detained and divulged details of the murder of a British businessman, Neil Haywood, by Bo's wife, Gu Kai Lai. In September, Wang was convicted of attempting to cover up the crime, defection, uh, illegal wiretapping and corruption, and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Uh, Bo, meanwhile, his former boss, has not been seen for nearly nine months and is being investigated uh, officially on charges of corruption. Uh, this article uh, examines Wang's life and career and uh, does him no favours. It describes his meteoric rise, uh, claims he used the media to create a positive public image and delves into his ruthless and apparently selective crackdown on gangs in Chongqing. It also paints a picture of a, a mercurial character who hired and fired on a whim, uh, enabled to do so by the opaque official recruitment system. And it concludes that uh, in what it calls the post Wang Lijun era, it's high time to take a critical look at the problems in Chinese officialdom and uh, the judicial system that enabled him to flourish. For some of the online reaction to this story, uh, this, uh, this article, and to Wang Lijun himself, of course, let's now join our researcher, Esther Dung. Okay, Esther, uh, first, Wang Lijun was, until his fall, really lionized by the media here in China and the public, it has to be said, as a sort of a, an untouchable super cop willing to do battle with these powerful mafia gangs. Uh, now it seems the reports have swung completely in the opposite uh, direction and there's nothing too evil for Wang to have been, become involved in. Uh, how did net users view this huge contrast? Well, it certainly seems that uh, the detention of Wang Lijun was a watershed in terms of the coverage in Chinese media. Uh, before that, almost every report focused on his crackdown on gangsters, his bravery and his academic achievements. Uh, that he served as uh, visiting professors for dozens of Chinese universities and published valuable research papers. But uh, after the U.S. consulate affair and his detention, uh, there was a period of virtual silence about him, at least in the Chinese media. Uh, then when his trial began, uh, the media coverage exploded, but all negative this time. Uh, reports of his vanity, manipulation of the press, uh, abuse of his staff, uh, illicit sexual relationships, and other things appeared everywhere. Um, and a lot of posts have since sound confused by this uh, and even angry and the simplistic black or white media reports. First, listen to Maggie 080. Uh, so a few months ago, he was a role model, but now he's a notorious criminal. And that DK Cheng uh, has this on Caixin.com. When he was still in office, he was portrayed as a hero, but now he's become a bandit. All this does prove the old saying, losers are always in the wrong. Um, and then there's this anonymous poster who says on the same side. I have to say this makes it really hard to distinguish between truth and lies. Uh, while Tao Sheng Xiang Ban sounds even more disappointed. The truth? Is there any truth? Who can tell us the truth? And uh, Xiu Cai Jiang Hu Xian Sheng has this question of the Chinese media. Uh, when you told us he was a hero, we were convinced. Now you say he's evil. We can't help wondering who you are. Um, and uh, Ma Cheng Wei uh, has this cynical view on Weibo.com. Uh, this is all nothing but a power struggle. Um, finally, we have this poster from Guangdong uh, who writes on Huanqiu.com. Only those who are political insiders can really understand all these things. Okay, uh, quite a bit of confusion there. So, uh, Now, this Southern Metropolis Weekly article contains, or, or certainly has provided, a lot of information about Wang Lijun, uh, which I guess is why it's attracted so much comment. Uh, has all this changed net users' minds? What have they to say about Wang himself? Well, opinions clearly fall into two groups, uh, supporters and critics. Uh, first, some typical comments from the former camp. 
uh, CGXY1 on 163.com. Uh, what defines a good official is performance, what they have done for the ordinary people. After all, it's a fact that he cracked so many huge criminal cases. And when he was in office, the public security in Chongqing was much better than before. Uh, and this poster on Sohu.com is another fan. For me, Wang Lijun is a person with a sense of justice. He doesn't deserve such a severe punishment. But uh, others don't agree, uh, like this poster from Beijing uh, who feels the opposite. It's only 15 years in prison. It's too light. He should have been sentenced to death. Uh, and this poster from Heilongjiang has more serious allegations on 163.com. What a devil. I'd just like to ask him, does he know how many people he's killed? Um, meanwhile, this commentary was posted in the Security Times newspaper. Wang portrayed his gang-bursting campaign as taken from the rich to help the poor. But the real fact was that it had become a way for the Chongqing government to make a fortune. Some rich people in Chongqing were labeled gangsters and had their companies closed down and their property confiscated. Uh, some were even put in prison. Um, and uh, as for the money they made from this, uh, they might have used a small part to improve people's lives, but the lion's share probably went into the officials' own wallets. Now, finally, Esther, the, the Southern Metropolis Weekly ends up this rather long report, it's about 40 pages, uh, with that advice for the authorities to take a good look at just how these official organizations, the judiciary and the police in particular, actually function uh, and how they might be improved. What do net users have to say about that? Quite a bit, actually. Uh, lots of posters mention the role of the law and the lack of independent supervision over power in Chinese officialdom. Um, this is from a poster based in Zhejiang. It's meaningless to only talk about Wang Lijun himself because it's not about an individual, it's about the whole political system. Uh, and this poster on Weibo.com says, What happened in Chongqing, I mean the fact that the law was trampled on, is also happening in other places around the country. The reason we criticize and examine the Chongqing model is to really figure out how to build a society under the rule of law. Um, and then this poster, Wei Ming Ha Ha, has this on QQ.com. How the law is made, how the authorities and ordinary people view the law, and how to implement the law. All these are questions our government and the whole of society need to think about and to answer. Um, and last but not least, uh, some other posters feel that uh, what's really at the core of the support for the anti-gangster campaign is actually anger and the widening gap between rich and poor in China and the people's desire to get rid of that. Uh, I'll finish up with this take from uh, Sun Yong. Even now, a certain number of people still feel sad and are sorry for Wang Lijun. For me, that indicates a kind of social mindset. With the gap between rich and poor in China gaining international attention, the Chinese public desperately want to see a fairer distribution of the country's wealth. That's why the anti-gangster campaign in Chongqing got so much support from lots of ordinary people. So the most effective way of avoiding a repetition of this is to improve people's lives and to build a fair and a just society. Right. Thanks for looking into that for us, Esther. And that was China Take researcher Esther Dung with reaction to a recently published in-depth article on Chongqing's disgraced former police chief and vice mayor Wang Lijun. Next on China Take, some of the top trending phrases on China's most popular search engines. Let's see what's got Chinese net users curious these days.